Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Luna, and we're going to be going over an, a game, Tiny Witch, which I have played before over on um, Twitch when I received it from Creative Hand, the dev team, and Keymailer. So thank you for giving me this game to showcase it. So when we first played it, this game actually came out September 1st, 2023, and we played it that release day weekend. And uh, you can catch the video here. So you can see the first gameplay as we walk through the very first beginning of this. So Tiny Witch um, is $9.99 on Steam currently right now. It is an indie simulation game by Creative Hand uh, de developer publisher, as, as I said before. The ratings are so far mostly positive. And I got into this type of a game because I loved the um, older game called Diner Dash. I loved flow and I just loved, I don't know, this just, just working and trying to serve all the customers and unlock all the things. Um, and that's what I, when I saw this game, I was like, oh, okay, okay. I do know this familiar, uh, layout and I would love to play this, but with Tiny Witch, you are a self store owner of, I believe four multiple stores. And you're there to provide services to the minions that come in per the different types of stores. So you are working with a demanding clientele and they're always at the door and they have a ton of different moods. Um, and you have to mix different resources using your cauldron and porter, mortar and pestle. I always mess that up. Um, and the different dungeon stores that you have and you have to try and get them before they walk away. So with Tiny Witch, the aspects of the game that I enjoy so far um, is that the variety of the maps that you're getting and the different um, things that you're doing. And as the maps go on, they do get harder and harder. So things you have to pay attention to. Um, for example, you have the clients that are patient. You have the clients that are not in a hurry. You have the clients that are going to be the most positive and tip well all the time. But you're also going to have those clients that don't have patience, that don't want to hear you saying sorry. And some of them that throw stuff at you. Um, and it can affect your entire mood and gameplay for a split amount of seconds. Um, so as we're seeing here, I have unlocked two of the cauldrons and three of the mortar and pestles, and you can slowly go through and unlock them per the money that you get. Now you, I believe there's 10 days for every shop. The one thing that I didn't like is that every shop has their own income. So what I earned from this one and when I finish this, this shop and I open another one, the income doesn't carry over. So it's like you're starting over from scratch all over again, relearning the recipes because every shop has their own recipes that you have to relearn. And once you kind of get the memorize of what needs what per the items on the left hand side, it can be a little daunting. Now you can buy little uh, tomes to set on your desk there that is by the customers, but you really have to be careful of what you're getting because some of the items can help you out to where you have a customer that doesn't like being told sorry and it doesn't work on them. Um, and then you can get one to set on the table that they will start accepting, you know, the apologies. Cause when you go up to someone and apologize, you can literally smash sorry, 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 sorry to get their wait time up. So they're more patient. But those items that are on that table, they only work for the two spaces that they're next to. So if you put one in the center, the person on the left and the person on the right of it is going to get that little boost. It doesn't work for everyone. So out of all the items that you get, you really have to pick and choose because there's no rhyme and reason to know who's going to stand in which spot. Um, that's the only thing that I kind of wish that when you set it down, it just worked for all the customers. Um, but it just adds a level of difficulty, but I like to get items that are actually going to shoot out to help me. So you can put an item down that shoots out a, a speed boost and you pick it up and you get a speed boost for, for so many seconds. Um, you can get an item that shoots out, um, you have protection from customers throwing stuff at you. Like we just had a customer throw a bat at us. When they throw a bat at you, you drop some money and you also kind of get discombobulated for a second. So it can slow you down, especially if you have like I have three there lined up that are not the happiest. Um, and it's, it is what it is. What I've noticed about this game is that I try not to get a perfect because I don't think it's possible. When you're not getting enough speed boost, you can only carry one item in your hand. And sometimes it, she doesn't move as smoothly as you would think she would. She's doing those little 
bopping walks, you know, her little hops, and she doesn't really move that fast. So when I'm trying to tell a customer sorry, but then I'm also trying to make sure my items don't burn in my cauldron, and then you have three people that just don't accept apologies, you're, you're gonna lose some customers. Like, I've come to the realization that I'm gonna lose some customers, it is what it is, and as long as I get the amount of money that I need, then it'll be fine. So when you're working these shops, you're working a day and a night shift. So you have a goal to meet in the day. If you can try and get as much as you can in the day, I feel like the night is usually the easiest um, because if you can do the max amount during the day, you really don't need to do a lot of orders at night because as you level up and unlock the maps, as you can see, these flames start to go out at nighttime. Um, so it's of course dark at nighttime and you get a you get a different group of minions but as those flames start to go out it starts to black out and then there's just a light bubble on you now sometimes it honestly doesn't bother me especially when you have the map memorized and you know where things are but sometimes it can just hurt your eyes and so then you have to constantly keep track on the call on the fire flames that can get a little annoying um so I like to honestly just try and rush through as much during the day. And then when we're doing the night shift, I'm just kind of like, okay, if I miss five people, I still hit my goal. And your goal is up top there with the money that you need. And then also on the left side, it tells you your total of the day and all the recipes that you'll be working so you know what to make. So one thing of coming back to the income is when you're in there and you're unlocking your cauldron, unlocking your uh, porter and mortar and pestles, see every time I, I flip it up um even when you have a good day i've noticed i never really get enough money to buy more than one thing like i would want to buy a cauldron but then also go buy this i don't know if it's just i'm not getting enough even when i'm hitting all of my goals and even if you go from map to map trying not to spend money well not map to map day to day trying not to spend money um I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little tight. It's a little expensive, uh, but I guess just try to do your best. Um, and you can get certain uh, add-ons to where your cauldron will cook faster. Uh, but like I said, after a while, trying to get through the obstacles is just a little too much because you also have like a leaky ceiling. And I don't even worry about trying to sweep anymore because again. And there's a lot going on for one person and you're trying to sweep you're trying to dodge what they're throwing at you you're also trying to dodge what they're putting on the floor that can mess you up um and so sometimes i just walk over it i'm like it is what it is but there are certain ones you start to memorize which you don't want to get hit with like there's one that a customer will throw at you that it reverses all of your controls and that's very annoying um and i feel like it lasts too long personally but there I am. I just, like I said, I don't even sweep the floors because it's just, I just don't have the time um, to go over to the broom and just try to get it up. And then also the controls aren't great, but I, it could be also that I use on keyboard. Um, so as I said, you can get this game on Steam. Um, developer, publisher, franchise, creative hand for $9.99. It's an indie simulation game. It is, of course, a single player. It has Steam achievements, and it also has full controller support um, for Xbox controllers. So I don't, by looking at that, PlayStation 5 most likely won't work, but it does have full controller support for your Xbox controller. Um, I wish that it just had a little bit more upgradable things that you always didn't have to buy. Um, like being able to carry two things in your hand. Like if you made it to the third map, hey, now you can, you know, carry two things in your hand or you made it to day five, like the halfway point, you can now carry two things in your hand. But the only way to get like a speed booth is you have to unlock the thing that's gonna shoot out and help you pick it up. Uh, but I am determined to at least get through all of the maps. Like I said, I believe there's four. I'll sh uh, pop up a picture here. Um, so you can fully look at that and see all the different maps that there are. But we've made it to the third one. And so I'm I'm right there. And I have only have 4.7, so rounded up, five hours in this game. And so that just shows that it's not a super long game. But I also have extra time on it because there had, like, I had to redo, uh, was it this one? Day six, I think. Yeah, I had to redo day six. Um... 
So if you are someone that can get through them without having to get through days, it's not a long game at all. Like I'm almost done and I've just hit almost five hours in the game. But I also have to step back and take some time away from the game because when you're redoing days and you're trying to at least get the quota, it can be a little daunting and hurt your brain. <laughs> so some things that you can get with Tiny Witch on Steam. Like I said, the game is $9.99. You can buy a creative hand collection. For, it's on sale right now for 20% off for $11.96. You can buy the support package bundle. It's on sale for 17% off at $8.28. And the buy cozy colorful bundle, it is 36% off for $19.18. And you can also get the Tiny Witch digital art book for $4.99. And the Tiny Witch original soundtrack for $4.99, which getting those together will be $9.98. Tiny Witch also has full steam deck support so it has a lot of options for you to play the game and a lot of different things to add on for the game and it like i said it's still new um so thank you to the devs and key mailer like i said that got me this game for free and so far it does have a positive out view on steam um with 42 reviews mine is up there as well if you want to check that out as long along with watching the very first gameplay that we were getting with this um with this game over on Twitch. So I'm not going to go through and talk too much longer, but hopefully you guys can watch a little bit more gameplay to kind of get a feel for Tiny Witch. And again, if you ever want to check out any of the live streams, just follow the links down below in the description. We would love to have you as we play a range of different indie and simulation games that are constantly taking over and a little bit more multiplayer and community game nights, which we would love to have you. So have a good rest of your day or night. Enjoy the rest of the video and the gameplay let me know what you think of it down below in the in the comments if you have played before or looking forward to play so have a good rest of your day or night wherever you are and this is luna galaxy out